Hi everybody, um, I finally got myself a nice microphone so I'm hoping that the audio is a lot better and clearer and crisper than my previous videos. Anyhow, today I am going to share with you my entire Lightroom workflow. So how I take, for example, uh, over here, from here, this really dark picture uh, to this bright, colorful, contrasty, oversaturated picture. I personally love color and I love drama in a photo. I don't know if it's my Latin background, but color is my best friend. Um, so if this is the kind of editing style that you like, or maybe you want to learn a little bit about how Lightroom works, then I will um, teach you step by step how to get from here to here. All right, so let's get started and I will reset the photo. So that is how I took the picture off camera. So the reason why it is so dark, it's because I had a uh, an ND1000 filter on it. This was about a two and a half minute exposure. My ISO was at 100 and my aperture at around 11. So of course, when the picture comes out, it has that really dark colored cast. However, when you have a really dark picture like this, it's important to know that you can recover the details in the shadows. So don't panic when you see a really dark picture. Lightroom will help you regain all the details and you can uh, increase the exposure and recover this photo. However, um, fixing a picture that it's overly exposed is going to be extremely difficult and probably not even doable. So enough about that. We'll just get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ex increase my exposure. All right. So it's already looking a little bit brighter. I'm going to increase my contrast just a little bit. Okay. Maybe I'll increase my exposure just a bit more. Maybe right there. That's good enough. All right. Now I'm going to bring down my highlights. And I'm going to open up my shadows. See, it's already looking a lot lighter, a lot better. Now my whites, I'm going to hold down the option on my Mac. And slide. So I get the clipping right there. My blacks. So I get those clips, those colors. So for this, I'm holding down the option and I'm sliding. Okay, so now my blacks are clipped. Okay, perfect. Now I don't like, this is from my rings over here. So on the very edges, you can see um, a little bit of vignetting from the rings, which I don't like. So I'm just gonna click. Okay. All right, it's already looking a lot better. Now this was taken at sunset. So I want to increase a little bit of those gold warm tones. So I'm going to slide my temperature so my picture is a bit warmer. Maybe my tint a little bit more pink in the clouds. See if I go all the way, my picture turns green. And But I want it a little bit pinker, a little bit warmer because this was a sunset photo. Okay, so right about there. So next, I'm going to increase my clarity. Clarity adds a bit more contrast and sharpness to your photos. So I really like increasing my clarity. Not too crazy. Uh, let's say around 40. Because I don't want my skies to be overly clear. And I definitely don't want my water to be overly clear. Because it's smooth. I did long exposure. So I do want that, that smoothness to be retained. Vibrance, I go a bit crazier. So because I really like my powerful, impactful, colorful photos. So I play with my vibrance more than I play with my saturation. My saturation, I will do it at a, more, at a more local level. So we might just saturate the picture just a little bit, but then further on, we're, we're actually gonna saturate the, the colors that I want to, to uh, have stand out, as opposed to having the entire photo saturated. Next, we're mo moving on to the tone curve. So here basically um, highlights is the tone curve works with luminance. So it'll work with your whitest whites and with your darkest darks. So uh, for example, here your highlights, see it's only, it only increases the highlights. It's not the whole picture, just the parts that are highlighted, like in the clouds, you can see the difference. 
I'm going to bring them up because I really like what it does to the sky. It makes the sky a little bit brighter. So I'm going to increase the highlights. And the shadows, I'm going to add shadows. So I'm going to slide this to the left. See, if I, if I was to bring the shadows to the other side, see how really bright the whole picture looks? But I think that having a little bit of shadows adds contrast to my photos and makes it a little bit more realistic. So now that that's done here, we can go with either the point curve, it's linear, medium contrast. It makes it a little bit more dramatic, strong. I don't know, that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna to stick to medium, okay. Now here on the HSL color bar is where I like to play with my saturation on my colors. So this is where I highlight the colors that I really want to pop. So here, let me see, I kind of like the tones in the sky. So I'm going to increase maybe the saturation in the oranges and in the yellows. See if I was to bring the yellows down, if you can notice in the clouds, they look less. But if I bring them a little bit higher, you know, it almost looks like the sun is shining on them, like the rays of the sun. So I really like what that does. Uh, the green in the water. I don't know if I want to make it greener. Think too much green. That looks really weird. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Luminance, again, I really like to see the effects in the clouds. See, if I bring it down, it makes the yellow darker. And it gives it a very weird tone to the clouds. So I'm going to maybe increase my luminance a little bit to lighten up those clouds just a tad bit. I already like it. I like it. Let's see with the green what it does to the water. See, it makes either the water darker or a bit brighter. But... Uh, let's see. I mean, this is up to your own taste. I'll just increase the luminance just a tiny bit, just right there. All right, let's see what we have so far. That's the before, and this is the after. So it's already looking a million times better. It's looking like a workable file. Split toning. So your highlights and your shadows, this controls the tone, the color tone in your highlights and in your shadows. So again, because this was a sunset photo, I really want those warm tones. So I'm going to go to my highlights and maybe, see I clicked on the yellow, so it makes the highlights yellow. If you move it around, you see how it'll affect your picture, but I'm not looking for anything unnatural. So I'm just probably going to stick to a nice orangey yellow type of tone. Because, I mean, I do love my color, but I want things to be somewhat real. So I think that's good. And now the shadows. We're going to play with the color in the shadows. So that's a bit blue. See what happens when I move around. It changes the color in the water a lot. So maybe we'll just leave it a little bit blue. Just a tiny bit. All right. So before the split toning adjustments, this is the before. And this is the after. Again, the before. Before we did that change, it's so subtle. Um, that's the after, but I like it better. So now next is the details. So I will sharpen my photo to about, let's say 60%, just because I really want to sharpen the rocks. And I want to sharpen the trees and the mountains a little bit. But I don't want to sharpen the sky or the water again because I like to keep that nice and smooth. So I'm going to hold down my option and I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to slide until I only want uh, the things that I want sharpened in white. So see, the more I slide, I want to remove the sky. I just want it to really be the rocks and the mountains. Again, I'm holding my option uh, button. That looks good enough for me. Your luminance, uh, this will kind of do the opposite of sharpening. It'll make your picture smoother. I don't really want to do that, but I just thought I'd let you know what that would do. Um, next here, this is cool. Remove chromatic aberrations. You should always do that. I don't really know why, but I read it somewhere. Can't remember why, but just do it. 
Anyways, this is cool. So I took this with a wide angle lens and the wide angle lens always distorts the corners. It rounds the picture up at the edges. So this is a really cool feature in uh, Lightroom. This is only when you shoot raw though. If you don't shoot raw, it's not gonna pick it up. You uh, click enable profile corrections and you can see it already knew the lens I used and it fixed the problem. So see how it had this slight curve? now to a perfectly straight picture. So it's great because it corrects the issues with the wide angle lens. Okay. Now, if you are not able to detect it, you can always come here and select, right? Your lens, uh, your zoom, and then it'll fix it for you. So you can manually do this if it doesn't, uh, if, if you can't do it, if, if it doesn't read it properly. All right. So then it's looking a lot better. I like to vignette my pictures a little bit. Let's say around 16. I like doing that because I like bringing the attention over to my subject. So in this case, it's the rocks with the mountain. So by vignetting, I bring the attention to it. It's, it's almost, uh, it, it's a good little special effect. So you'll see before, Everything is really bright in the picture. I mean, it still looks nice, but the vignetting adds that extra drama and, and it highlights my subject a little bit better. All right, so we scroll down. We're almost done with the global adjustments. So we're scrolling down. And right here, Adobe, you can choose, for example, landscape. Again, all these options are only available if you're shooting in RAW. But I think I like, I like camera standard. Mm, let's see what I had before. I'll just stick to what I had before. Here you can you can play with your primary colors. So decreasing the reds, see, makes my picture less eh, colorful. I'm going to slide. I always like my reds a little bit more intense. So I'm going to slide that over to 18. My greens, again, that's desaturated look. I'm not much for a desaturated uh, type of photography. I love my bright, bold colors. So I'm just going to, there's a lot of green in the photo, so I'm not, I'm not going to screw around with this one too much. All right. So, I mean, this is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the before. That's the after. All right. So that is for my global, oh my, sorry, guys. That was for my uh, global adjustments. Now I'm going to do my local adjustments. All right, now that I deleted a whole bunch of files from my computer, we are going to start with the local adjustments. So this is where I work on the individual parts that I want to fix instead of the whole picture as a whole. So first things first, I'm going to grab my brush over here and this basically paints whatever effects you want from here onto your subject. So I want to make my pictures really clear. So I'm going to increase my clarity to 100 because I love the contrast between the solid uh, parts of the picture and a long exposure versus the smoothness of the water and the sky. I really like that really dramatic contrast because I'm a very dramatic person. So let's paint my rocks with 100% clarity and you can already see how much sharper they are. Uh, contrasty, brighter, they really stand out more so it's already looking a lot better. Why is this painting? All right, yeah, that's working. Okay, perfect. So you can already see the difference in the rocks. Looks a lot better, okay. And I'm going to use this also for the mountains back here, the trees, and for the mountain. It looks a lot better. See, just right here. A bit sharper. A little bit, a bit nicer. So, okay. That's done. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of brightness over here. It's a little bit too dark for my taste. So I'm going to grab my graduated filter. Okay. And you see it has the effect of the brush. So I'm going to reset that. So I'm going to scroll over to effect, hold my mouse over, hit the option key, and click it. Okay. So then it resets everything. 
And then I'm gonna go and increase my exposure just because I want it brighter. Now I'm gonna grab my graduated filter. I'm gonna drag it. But see, it's applying the effect of the exposure to the sky and I want it to be down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it. Okay, right here, so this is what I want. And I'm gonna flip it. And now see, it's in the rocks. It's making my rocks brighter. But it's a bit too bright, so I'm gonna bring it down just a tad bit. Maybe down to 18, okay. Drag it down here a little bit. Drag it here, okay. So now my picture is a little bit brighter, okay. Anyways, done. Maybe I'll bring down my exposure just a tiny bit for my overall picture. Yeah, okay. Now, now we're officially done. Okay, now we're officially done. So my before and my after. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a little bit more about Lightroom. I will be posting more uh, before and afters of uh, work that I do. And I hope you find this very useful. So thanks, thanks for watching. Yeah.